Good morning and welcome to my human nutrition case study. This case study will focus on a 28 year old female's nutrition history, personal anthropogenic measurements, 24 hour food recall, three day food record, issues encountered with the 24 hour recall and evidence based recommendations, issues encountered with a three day food record and evidence based recommendations, and the body mass index. First, I would like to introduce the individual who kindly completed this nutrition task for me. This individual has an extensive medical history, including many food intolerances, irritable bowel syndrome, and reoccurring golden staph infection flare-ups. We can see on the table that she completed that she lives with two female housemates, prepares most of meals herself, has intermediate cooking abilities, and majority of the time prepares meals at home. Her current body weight is 63 kilos. She's 174 centimetres tall. Waist circumference is 68.5 centimetres. Currently on no prescription medication. Takes probiotics, magnesium and digestive enzymes. This woman has a long medical history of many food intolerances and currently implements the FODMAP diet within her lifestyle. She has no allergies, just intolerances. She eats around two to three meals per day and snacks between three to four meals per day. We will be able to review this eating style later when we see her 24 hour recall and three day food record. Foods mostly consumed are fruit and dark chocolate, most commonly consumed, sorry, are fruit and dark chocolate. Favorite foods are meat and dark chocolate, although she dislikes foods which are oligosaccharides, fructo oligosaccharides and fructans. She avoids these particular foods due to intolerances. She eats up at home up to seven nights per week, has taken away, has take away, sorry, less than once per week, and usually drinks a minimum of 2.2 litres to 2.5 litres of water and enjoys coffee when not consuming water. I mentioned previously that this individual avoids oligosaccharides, fructo oligosaccharides and fructans. To help listeners understand, I found it important to dive deeper into what these foods are and why this individual avoids them at all costs. Oligosaccharides are defined to be a category that compromises of both fructans and galacto oligosaccharides. This therefore refers to the sugars that are found in garlic, onion and wheat. This individual is extremely sensitive to oligosaccharides. According to the FODMAP friendly website, our small intestine lack the enzymes to break down oligosaccharides and therefore fructans and galacto oligosaccharides are not absorbed. The fructans and the galacto oligosaccharides then pass through the small intestine where they are fermented by the gut bacteria causing gases in the process. It is understood that people with irritable bowel syndrome, such as this individual, have heightened visceral hypersensitivity, which in tarot means that they tend to have enhanced perception of pain and discomfort in the large intestine. This means when gases are produced in the large intestine by fermentation of the oligosaccharides, people with IBS extreme experience symptoms like painful cramping, bloating, where those without IBS do not experience these type of symptoms. This individual has not been medically diagnosed with IBS as many doctors will not take her intolerances seriously due to living in, due to living remotely and not having and, and having limited doctors and naturopaths to visit for second opinions. This individual finds it extremely hard eating on a regular daily basis, but especially when eating out. This individual always has to ask for no onion and no garlic due to the consequences that follow when consumed. Nearly every time she asks for none of these of the above ingredients, without a doubt, they are just picked off the plate, especially in salads and not made fresh. We always wondered if we compared her allergies reactions to peanuts, would they be taken more seriously? The side effects of this individual, if this individual eats something that even has the residue of oligosaccharides or on it cause her the, cause her to cause her stomach sorry the next morning to be extremely bloated and it is quite strange as her body and face swell 
it would all you would almost think that she's had an allergic reaction to something. Now that I've explained the meaning behind the oligosaccharides, I'll move on to fructo oligosaccharides. They are defined to be uh, sorry, they are composed of short fructin, fructose chains and they are a type of carbohydrates and fructose is a keto hex, hexose monogosaccharides, the sweetest of the natural carbohydrates when combined with glucose to form disaccharides, disaccharides sucrose. Moving on to the 24-hour recall. It can be seen by reviewing her recall that she starts her morning with a large drink of water before eating breakfast and then we can see throughout the day she consistently eats two other main meals and multiple snacks in between. If we break down her food consumption and categorise into food groups, I can compare her intakes with the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating recommendations. First looking at fruit, this individual does not meet the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating recommendations. They recommend two to three per serves of fruit per day, and as we reviewed er earlier, she only consumed one small or orange throughout the day. After discussing this with the individual to ask why she doesn't consume more fruit, she informed me this is due to her intolerance to fructans, the sugar which is contained within fruits. As this in individual implements the FODMAP diet into her lifestyle, oranges are her safest option to include fruit within her diet and daily food consumption as they are low on the FODMAP diet. Moving on to grains, this individual has a gluten intolerance. This therefore increases the difficulty of consuming grains or cereals, let alone meeting the Australian Dietary Guidelines for Healthy Eating recommendations. This individual has just discovered they can eat a small amount of sourdough per week, and in her 24 hour recall, she ate two small pieces of sourdough therefore only eating two serves of grain, whereas the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating recommends four to six serves per day. Lean meats are mentioned to be one of the individual's favourite meals. Steak and freshly caught saltwater fish is this individual's go-to meal. The Australian Guide to Healthy Eating recommends one to three serves per day, in which this individual met through consuming barramundi, eggs and protein powder. As this individual is lactose intolerant, meeting the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating recommendations is challenging to say the least. When reviewing her 24-hour recall, we can see that she only consumes 1.5 serves of dairy, where the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating recommends two to three serves per day. And finally, on to the last food group, vegetables. The Australian Guide to Healthy Eating recommends three to five serves of vegetables, legumes or beans per day. Although vegetables are generally a big part of this individual's diet, within this 24 hour recall, this individual only ate two serves of vegetables, therefore not meeting the recommendations. My suggestions to this individual to implement more fruit into their diet is to research further into the FODMAP diet and start implementing smaller amount of low fructo fructose fruits into their diet. Implementing more grains into their lifestyle could be challenging. For the likes of quinoa pudding or finding FODMAP friendly pasta or muesli could be an alternative to increase the grain servings per day. Implementing more legumes and beans within the diet could be a great alternative to increase more proteins. This individual could try eating more canned beans and legumes, tofu, and potentially making a trail mix to snack on throughout the day consisting of nuts and seeds. Although this individual is lactose free, this doesn't mean she can't find other alternatives to include more serves of milk, yogurt, and cheese with the extra alternatives. It is surprising to know that 100 grams of almond with the skin on, half a cup of pink salmon or 100 grams of tofu have the same amount of calcium as one serving of milk, yogurt or cheese. Implementing these alternatives would greatly increase the serving consumed for calcium in her diet. Finally, vegetables. More vegetables could be Im implemented through the day quite easily from making vegetable dense stews soups or bolognese meals, or 
eating celery and carrot sticks with hummus for a snack throughout the day. Increasing vegetables would be easy for this individual as many of the vegetables that she does already consume are FODMAP friendly. After speaking with this individual, she identified that there were indeed some issues encountered when performing the 24 hour recall. The main issues that she encountered with a 24 hour recall was clearly remembering exactly what she had eaten purely off memory. The next issue was that she had to guess the amounts of food that she was consuming. Therefore, the foods may have been documented to be more or less than what she actually did consume. The final issue, issue she encountered was, due to lack of memory, she did forget some foods that she did consume, and due to this lack of memory, she admits that her eating was documented to be a lot healthier than it actually was. The advantages of the 24-hour recall according to NutriTools can be, the 24-hour recall can be used to estimate the usual intakes of the individual's food and therefore has the ability to identify the food groups most consumed throughout this particular day. 24 hour recalls allow the collection of extra data, where the meal was eaten, how the individual was feeling, were they stressed after work, emotionally eating or hungry after a big day of physical activity, as well as the brands of the food. By completing this recall, this also provides a detailed, detailed data leading to good estimates of short-term diet and nutrition intakes. If in a clinical environment, a 24-hour recall is a quick and easy screening tool to help the medical professional recognise the eating habits of their client or patient. The disadvantages of the 24-hour recall, according to NutriTools, is that it, it sorry, is that it is not the most suitable for measuring distant or past meals or irregular food consu foods consumed. It is not suitable for individuals with memory loss as they may not be able to remember or correctly disclose what they consume for that day. As we saw above, this individual, as we saw above in this individual's personal experience, forgetting items that have been consumed is much more common than we think. It is common for people completing the 24 hour recalls to add or leave out foods they have consumed purely to, dis to misremembering. The next part of my presentation, I'll be discussing the, food day, the three day food record. Throughout the, the first day of this individual's food, three day food record, she consumed a total of three main meals with six small snacks in between she consumed two serves of lean meat, one, point, one and a half serves of dairy, three serves of fruit, three serves of vegetables, and two serves of grains. Therefore, she met the amount of servings according to the recommended daily intake of the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating with protein, lean meats, fruit, and vegetables. She, although did not meet the recommendations of grains and dairy being one, one to two serves under in each category. She consumed one, uh, sorry, 2.1 litres of water and the discretionary foods that were consumed consisted of Nutella, Cadbury marshmallow Easter egg, instant coffee, butter to fry the fish and old gold rum and raisin caramel chocolate. The second day of the three day food record, this individual consumed five serves of lean meat uh, and protein, one serve of grains, one serve of fruit, four serves of vegetables and one serve of dairy. Throughout this day, she did lack in grains, fruit and dairy, therefore, again, not meeting all of the recommendations from the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating. Her meals are much the same as the day before, but with main meals and snacks in between. This particular day, no breakfast was consumed. This would have been a good opportunity to consume a meal like eggs on toast or sourdough to increase the protein and grain servings. She drank 2.1 litres of water and the discretionary foods follow, butter, ranch dressing, and instant coffee. On the final day of the three day food record, this is where the individual consumed the most amount of food and was the closest to reaching the serving recommendations from the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating. She consumed five serves of protein 
and lean meats, three serves of grains, one serve of fruit, and four serves of vegetables, and two serves of dairy. Every food group serving size was met except fruit. My suggestions to this individual is to, con is to increase their serving levels in line with the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating is to introduce high protein and grain breakfast. These could consist of bacon and eggs served on sourdough, sourdough with banana and Nutella, or quinoa puddings. Try to implement eating more fruit into their lifestyle that are FODMAP friendly and low in fructose to increase the serves of fruit and, in and to increase the serves of dairy through finding FODMAP friendly and lactose free consumables like milk, yogurt and cheeses. The next section of my presentation will be looking at the three day food record advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of the food day record are considered to be the following according to the Australian Department of Health. The three day food record provided detailed data on food and drink consumptions for the consecutive days. This, is, this therefore provides information of the food consumptions, tends, trends and that trends that occur over the three day period. This record also allows for the individual to document measurements and types of foods that they are preparing and eating themselves. By documenting on the go, it is more, it is, they are more consistent and more reliable records of food measurements and eating habits. Much like the 24 hour recall, there are disadvantages to the three day food record also. According to the Department of Health, it has been seen in the three day food record records that individuals will drastically change their food consumption over the three consecutive days to try to seem as if, as if they have a healthier and more balanced lifestyle and diet than they actually do. Due to the number of days that are required to be documented, it has also been seen that the level of, of the level and quality of documentation decreases as the individual moves through the three days. Throughout this time, the individual also has the time to make changes to the measurements of what they are eating and the foods they are consuming to try and convince themselves they are eating more and le or less than what they actually are. The next part of my presentation, I will be discussing the body mass index, or most commonly known as BMI. What it is, how it's calculated, and how this measurement assists in deciding an individual's health status. The BMI is an easy and inexpensive screening tool that can help determine one weight and health category. Those categories being underweight, a healthy weight, overweight or obese. The BMI is an easy and expense, inexpensive screening. Oh, sorry, I already read that. Looking at the diagram retrieving the Australian retrieved from the Australian Department of Health, we can see how the height and weight of an individual can determine where on the BMI scale the individual will sit. There are a few discrepancies with the BMI legitimacy and is highly controversial. For example, a rugby football player who is 175 centimetres tall and 110 kilos of mainly muscle, this BMI calculation would consider the individual to be overweight. BMI does not cater for all body types, physical disabilities or conditions. BMI does not take, also does not take into account the person's body fat versus muscle content. Moving on to the individual's BMI score. We can see that her height is 147, uh, sorry, 174 centimetres and her weight is 68 kilograms. If we divide her weight in kilos by her height in square metres, she gets a body mass index score of 22.46. Uh, a score of 22.46 puts this individual in the healthy weight range of the BMI scale. If we review the individual's waist circumference from her anthropogenic measurements, her waist measures to be 68.5 centimetres. If we take a look at the picture on the slide, we can see that the individual does not fall into the increased or greatly increased risk area, and therefore this individual has a healthy waist circumference for her age, weight and height. From this presentation, I have learnt that an individual with an extensive medical history, including golden staph infection and 
and reoccurring flare-ups, IBS, gluten intolerance and lactose intolerance can cause many challenges to their diet and lifestyle. Living with such intolerances and making consuming can make consuming a range of different foods and meeting the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating Food Group recommendations extremely challenging. Body mass index is an, a debatable and, in my opinion, an outdated and offensive way to measure one's health, as so many considerable factors are not considered. Putting aside, we saw that the individual was in the healthy weight range for her height, wage, age, as well as a healthy weight circumference for her height, wage, and age weight and age also. There are many different aspects to living a healthy lifestyle and I do believe that completing a 24-hour recall and three-day food record can assist professionals to guide individuals towards better health and healthier lifestyle habits. Thank you for listening.